2020, we ended up with about, let's say, $125, $130 billion of overall biopharma M&A. 21, 22 were smaller years. We saw about 65 billion, about 80 billion. With the acceleration that we saw in Q4 of last year, we ended the year with 140 billion. And so we're quite optimistic about both the tailwinds as well as kind of the broader picture for 2024 with respect to M&A. I think beyond Immunogen, beyond Corona, we had sold Prometheus early in the year in INI. We had sold Riata in rare disease. And so when you think about the actual tailwinds for biopharma M&A, they're quite durable. We're seeing 10, 15, $20 billion franchises all roll off in the next 10 years. And so that creates a lot of demand, a lot of tailwind that's very durable in nature. Everyone needs to fill their pipeline. When you think about their balance sheets, Yes, some have prosecuted some M&A in the last three, five years, but many have not. We are quite optimistic about the need for M&A, as well as the idea that especially with biotech where it is, you'll likely continue to see more M&A in the, in the months to come. So when you think about maybe areas for M&A, it's also useful to think about, let's, let's call it a handful of therapeutic areas. And so when you think about the last five years, we've seen about $250 billion of oncology-specific M&A. That's probably logical to most people. What's actually surprising to a lot of people, and I think IRA has helped this, is there's one, one area that's actually been bigger than oncology, that's actually rare disease. Rare disease has been big, especially the last five years. You've seen names like a Shire, more recently like a Horizon in rare disease. But I think a lot of people don't think about kind of the up and coming areas. I and I, inflammation immunology, is very clearly a focus for large cap pharma period, full stop. These are very large indications. These are pipelines and a product, but behind oncology, rare disease and INI, I'd highlight two other areas of therapeutic area focus that candidly have been forgotten for a long time. One is cardiovascular and the second is CNS. And I think there are a lot of expectations from investors in the overall ecosystem that CNS may be another area of consolidation in 2024. So I would say overall, as it ties to, I think, both the corporate mindset as to how the XBI might perform this year on the tailwinds of M&A, we're quite optimistic.